Hi, welcome to Nini's Nest. Today we're going to read the last of the selections that my library has of Otis books. So my favorite character, this is my last story that I have available to me. It's titled Otis and the Kittens. And it's again by Lauren Long, a New York Times bestselling author. And I love these little kittens and they're inside of a fireman's hat. Here's one up on top of the tractor. Otis, our heroic tractor who always has an adventure. So let's see what it says on the inside cover. Um, one hot, dry afternoon on the farm, Otis the tractor spots something moving in the valley. An orange tabby cat headed straight for the old barn. But then Otis sees something else that causes his engine to sputter. A swirl of smoke coming from the same barn. It's a fire, and we know that Otis always seems to save the day. So let's go on inside and find out what happens. And I think we can see that there might be some firemen involved, or maybe Otis is a fireman, <laughs> a fire tractor. We'll find out. This beautiful, beautiful farm where Otis lives. It was hot and dry on the farm where the friendly little tractor named Otis lived. Otis couldn't remember the last time it had rained. Farmers all over the valley grew more anxious by the day. Water was in short supply. The ground was hard and the corn stalks were half as tall as they should have been. Otis spent his afternoons out in the sweltering fields with the farmhands baling straw. Sweltering is a big word, so let's say that means it's extremely hot. Sweltering means you're sweating and the heat is just not a good thing. And you can see it looks dry and no green grass. Once the load was full, with a puff and a chuff, Otis would pull the wagon into the old barn down by the bend at Mud Creek. The farm hands would use a pulley to lift each bale up into the loft where it would be stored for the long winter to come. When the sun had gone over the hill and work was done, Otis was ready to sit in the shade and rest, but not Otis's friend, the bull. And we remember the bull from our last story. The bull liked to stand in front of Otis and snort and snarl and huff hot air. Two snorts, a snarl and a huff. All the animals knew what that meant. The bull was challenging Otis to a tug of war. Otis smiled. His friends were always eager to play, even after a long day of work. We used to play tug of war at school when I was in um, elementary school. And some get on this team and some get on this team and they pull on both sides of the rope and whoever pulls it over the line is the winner. One duck wound the end of a rope around the bull's horn. Another duck looped the other end around Otis's steering wheel. The animals then took sides, grabbing on any way they could. Everyone pulled and tugged with all of their might. Eventually, Otis would ease up a little. He didn't care much about winning. He just liked having fun with his friends. One afternoon, when everyone was up under the shade of the apple tree, Otis spotted something moving down in the field. It looked to be an orange tabby cat. Where did she come from? Otis wondered. He watched as she ran toward the old barn, and there he saw something that caused his engine to sputter, a swirl of smoke. Almost looks like that tornado that we saw in the last story with the bull. But this time it is smoke, not wind. Otis raced to the barn with the animals following behind. 
They discovered flames coming from the loft inside the barn. A fire! The barn was filled with brittle, dry straw, and Otis knew it wouldn't take long for it all to burst into flames. Just then, the tabby cat appeared in the barn window. It's kind of tiny, but you can see. If you um, move in, focus in, zoom in, I'll pull the book up for some who can't do that. Right there in the window of the barn. With a put, puff, puttity chuff, Otis rushed into the burning barn. Our brave, heroic tractor. Inside, the flames were growing and smoke was forming a dark cloud. The cat was pacing back and forth high above on a rafter. The cat, oh, excuse me, Otis chuffed for her to jump down, but the cat wouldn't budge. Instead, she stared down at Otis and belted out the loudest meow Otis had ever heard. What was she trying to tell him? Suddenly, Otis heard a tiny meow from the hayloft, and then another tiny meow, and another, and another, and another, and another. At once, five furry little heads popped up and stared down at him. Kittens! As flames blazed overhead, Otis stood on hind wheels and stretched to the edge of the loft to a chorus of tiny meows. One by one, the kittens hopped down. Let's count those kittens. One, two, three, four, five. He's about to be a hero again. The farm animals cheered as Otis emerged from the burning barn with five kittens all over him. But as soon as Mama Cat counted their little heads, she meowed frantically back at the barn. This time, Otis had no doubt what she was saying. How many more were still in there, he wondered. By then, the top of the barn was engulfed in flames, sending large plumes of smoke into the sky. Otis was afraid, but he gunned his engine, screeched his tires, and dashed back into the burning barn. What a brave tractor. Inside, the heat was growing worse, and it was hard to breathe. Otis revved his engine, and one last little head popped up, trembling from fear. Otis puffed a gentle chuff, and the kitten climbed down on top of him, hopped to his seat, leapt to the floor, and scampered out of the barn to safety. Outside, the animals cheered when they saw another kitten emerge, and they watched for Otis to follow. Inside, the flames spread by the second. Otis wheeled around to see if any more kittens were left. The old boards of the barn's floor creaked, buckled, and moaned. The walls popped. He couldn't wait another second. Second, Just as Otis spotted the exit and raced his wheels to leave, there was a giant crash. Look at his eyes. I bet he's somewhat frightened. The floor collapsed and Otis plunged to the darkness below. Outside, the animals held their breath, waiting for their friend to emerge. Inside, Otis couldn't move. He had fallen into the cluttered lower level of the old barn and he was covered in dust debris, and broken planks. Stuck in the hole with the fire raging above, Otis could hardly puff a breath. Then he heard the siren of the fire chief Douglas and the fire chief, I mean, let me read that again. Then he heard the siren of fire chief Douglas and the fire engine. The farmer pulled up and Otis heard him rounding up the animals. Help had arrived. He knew he'd be fine until he heard Fire Chief Douglas holler. 
Sorry, farmer, the creek's gone dry in the drought and the water supply's too low to save this old barn. As long as everyone's safe, we'll have to just let her burn. Underneath the pile of broken boards and dust, Otis couldn't see a thing or move a gasket and his heart sank deep inside his engine. What do you think is going to happen next? Our heroic tractor needs help now. I believe his friends are gonna help. <gasps> the animals had grown wild with fear. The farmer counted them one by one. They were all safe and sound. He couldn't figure out why they were acting so crazy. Suddenly, the little calf bolted for the barn door. Her friends followed right behind. Inside the fiery barn, they spotted Otis stuck down in the hole, covered in boards and dust. His engine was barely running. How could they ever get him out? I'm seeing some sort of an idea forming in their minds. The bull looked up at the rafters and down at Otis. He stood in front of the hole in the floor and snorted and snarled and huffed hot air. Two snorts, a snarl and a huff. The animals knew just what that meant. One duck grabbed the pulley rope and wound it around the bull's horns. Another duck flew into the hole and hooked it to Otis' steering wheel. The bull snorted and tugged and snarled and pulled, but Otis didn't budge. The horse and the cow grabbed the rope behind the bull and together they snorted and tugged and neighed and mooed and pulled and Otis teetered ever so slightly. The little calf jumped in and tugged and bawled and pulled and Otis raised a bit more. The puppy grabbed the rope behind the little calf and with a fierce arf, arf, tugged and pulled and growled as Otis inched upward. And then ca came a piercing meow and the sound of Fire Chief Douglas shouting, holy moly, Otis is in there. Hold on tight, everyone. I'm here to help. Fire Chief Douglas grabbed the end of the rope and tugged and pulled and tugged. All together, the animals and Fire Chief Douglas lifted Otis higher and higher until he was suspended above the hole. The ducks swooped in and pushed him over the edge of the opening to where they could lower him to the floor. Together, everyone pulled the dust and ash-covered tractor out from the burning fire, just as parts of the barn began to fall. Then Fire Chief Douglas and his men hosed off Otis and wiped down his frame. The cool water revived Otis, and everyone cheered when they heard a faint putt, puff, puttity, chuff. It was music to their ears. The kittens jumped up on top of Otis and crawled all over him. Fire Chief Douglas laughed and said, Farmer, what say we adopt these kittens and their mama? Then make a mighty fine addition to our firehouse family. Otis puffed a happy chuff. He couldn't think of a better home for his new friends. What a happy ending. And we have some heroic friends in this story. And I'm certain they are happy they were able to rescue their friend, Otis. I hope at some point my library will get some more Otis books. And I would certainly like to buy some of them for my grandchildren. Hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe so you can go and look at all of the Otis stories on my channel. Hope to see you soon.